Good evening. Good evening. I totally couldn't hear Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Right okay. How many of you have asked yourself in the past like 90 days <coughs> what you really want? Right? Yeah. And how many of you who have asked yourself got like a clear, concise answer? What you really wanted? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Interesting. Good. And then how many of you who got that clear, concise answer found that within just a couple of months, you actually got what you wanted and found that right behind that was something else you wanted. You know? Yeah. That's who we are. <laughs> that's the thing with wanting, right? Is that we always want more. Now, what I'm fascinated by is if we want all these things, why don't we have them? And do you find that you have certain things that you don't want? Yeah? And then you want something you don't have? Right? And I have this assumption that if we really wanted it, we would already have it. So what I'm going to explore tonight is kind of the inner game. You know, why don't we have what we want? And the stuff that we do have, why don't we want it? And let me tell you how this kind of came about. Now, some people have asked me, yes, I was a Buddhist monk. Yes, I trained to be a geisha. That was after the league dumped me. And I was trying to figure out how to be hot. So <laughs> that's going to have to be over cocktails. We're not going there now. So, um, I recently had the great good fortune to serve the Dalai Lama in his Midwest tour. And so I'm, I'm hanging out with the Dalai Lama and all those peeps, and um, I'm thinking, this is going to be so cool, we're going to be so spiritual, I can't wait. I arrive at the monastery, and um, they go, okay, the Dalai Lama's coming tomorrow, so we need to get busy, we're going to do some stuff here. And I'm like, good, I'm a good worker, I'm, I'm down with this, you know, cool. So they're passing out chores, and they're like, okay, so we need someone to clean the garden. And I'm like, and I, it's a monster, so you can't go, pick me! You know, you've got to be kind of cool. So I'm like, yeah. um, And so they pick somebody else to do the gardening, and I'm like, okay, fine. And then, oh, someone needs to arrange the temple objects. I'm like, I don't know. Um, someone needs to move furniture. So basically, the, the whole list whittled down, and like, I'm watching all these people were gone, and like, they're not picking me. And I'm, you know, I've done enough therapy to not like have like a little, you know, junior high school things where like they don't pick you and like all this other stuff. You know, because I'm sitting there going, you know, okay, I wasn't eat, but uh, I had a makeover. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're running out of tasks. And I'm like, and the tasks are getting more and more funky, you know? So then they go, okay, so who's gonna clean the toilets? And I'm like, cool. What's that? And I'm looking around and I'm going, oh shit. <laughs> Me? And um, you might think, oh, Christine, don't be a baby. Cleaning toilets isn't that bad. Let me tell you a bit about Buddhist monks. <laughs> <laughs> they are very focused in, you know, the other world. Here's, here's a Buddhist monk. Okay, it's what Buddhist monk. Buddha, 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 Buddha. Basketball. Buddha, 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 Buddha. Basketball. Okay, that's it. Okay, there's Buddha, there's basketball. Okay? They're not, like, totally focused on the material world. And this monster, like, about this had been clean probably in, like, I don't know, a decade or so. <laughs> <laughs> so I put my gloves on, I'm wearing my little Lululemon, I kiss my manicure goodbye, and like, I just dive in. <laughs> and um, I realized pretty quickly that I have to think of some really compelling topic to think about, or I'm just going to bum my high, right? Like, my whole idea of, like, being all spiritual and hanging with the Dalai Lama, it, my illusion is kind of crushed right now. So I'm cleaning all these toilets. I don't clean them for an hour, not two hours. I clean them for 12 hours one day, and they say, oh, such a good job. Here's the next batch of toilets. So then the next day, right, I'm doing it again. So I'm a good sport, you know, but um, I had to have something to focus on. And here's what I got as I was cleaning all these toilets. Now, <laughs> good stuff happens later. I mean, I, I did get to hang with the Dalai Lama. We did get to meditate. We saw all groovy and gay, emptiness, and, you know, the heart sutra. But before that, I went to like a case or two of comics. Okay, it was a situation. So here is, here's what I want to share with you. I realized that we're always going to want something, right? We get something and then we want something else, like right behind it. And then we have all these things that we thought we didn't want, but they're in our lives, so what's that about? I think that if you don't yet have something that you want, you need to look at why you are uncomfortable with having it. I have this assumption 
that if we really could have what we wanted, you know, we'd have it already. And uh, think about the stuff that you want and that you have. It was clearly totally okay with you to have that. So this brings up an interesting thought. <coughs> Let's look at why we always want more and why we seem to be good at having things that we don't necessarily want. See, we're innovators. You know, we create cool stuff, we build amazing companies, we eat rejection for breakfast. You know, we're hardcore. We're courageous in our outer game as we're building all these great businesses and taking them public and making millions and millions of dollars. But are we courageous in our inner game? Often entrepreneurs think that we need to look perfect, polished, say the right thing, do these various things to get respect in the outer world. We think our intellects are going to help us through anything because we're smart cookies. But really, our intellects that we rely so strongly on are not in charge. Did you guys know that recent neuroscience data shows that 90% of our reactions are emotional? And our emotions respond 400 times faster than our intellect. 400 times faster. The most consistently successful, amazing, fulfilled people that I know are constantly reinventing themselves. And they're becoming more real. They know it's one humanity that enables connection and trust, which fosters authenticity and ultimately leads to both professional fulfillment and high performance. So if you just make a practice of revealing yourself to the people in your life, then you will get deep connection, true intimacy, high performance, huge sales quotas, you know, all good things. Now, how do we do this? Has anybody here been burned out before? <laughs> oh, not me, right? <laughs> okay, you've heard that I've built and sold five companies, 700% ROI, blah, 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 less than 200 companies, including Google, who cares, whatever, okay? I used to be an achievement addict. I'm sure. Yippee. <laughs> so here's what I want you guys to understand. Okay? So we're going to have up here, we're going to have circle slash burnout. Okay? Where does it all begin? Okay? It begins at connection, which requires you to be raw and real. We're going to talk about in a sec. Connection then leads to trust. When you trust somebody, you can then delegate to them. When you can delegate, then you don't have to get burned out. Stay with you. Okay. Hi. <laughs> I'm Christine Comicord. You can hang up on my legs if you want. Um, I quite like them. Um, we're here today to, to really discover how to build successful organizations, but also to be wildly successful and deeply fulfilled inside. And the vast majority of people that I meet, let's just be honest for a second, are not deeply fulfilled in both their business life and their personal life. So, without connection to oneself, without really going deep and getting really raw and real, and don't worry, um, it's only going to take us 20 minutes, we're going to figure it all out. <laughs> Kidding. Um, I want us to start on how do you reveal yourself? How do you reveal yourself? Revealing yourself is scary. That's why tonight you're going to learn how to reveal yourself in inches which then lead to feet, which then lead to yards, which then lead to miles. A word of caution, most of us have relied on our drive. And of the two presidents, four billionaires, all sorts of fancy people that I've had the great good fortune to coach, mentor, or work with, what I found is that the vast majority of us, our drive comes from not enough, feeling that we're not enough, feeling that we have to keep achieving things to be somehow okay. So that works for a while, and you can rely on your drive for a while. But sooner or later, your drive then leads to burnout, your drive then leads to disillusionment, depression, etc. And then you keep going, you keep building that company because you've got this legacy, because you invested in building this company, and now you're kind of stuck, and you're kind of trapped. And you're building that company, you're building that company, you're not happy, you're not happy, and you're, and you're feeling like, ugh, I hate my company, I want to get rid of it, I'm not fulfilled. Your drive will not sustain you. You all have heard the Dalai Lama, you've heard Chip Conn, you've heard a bunch of people talk about a, a job, a career, and then a calling. Okay, the calling is where you don't think about your drive anymore because you are inspired at a deep, profound level. Now, when did you choose to stop revealing yourself? 
What did you choose to stop really revealing yourself, really being real in business? Was it an isolated incident when life smacked you down? You know? Was it when you were elevated high and you thought that you know you couldn't really appear human? I mean, when I was consulting for the White House, I was like, not real. <laughs> I was like, I'm hanging with the Clintons. I gotta keep my shit together, you know? And it would have been probably more effective just to say, you know what, Phil, I don't know. I need help here. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. Um, we have to fire 200,000 people because they're seat warmers and we should replace them with 10,000 contractors. Do I have to do that? You know? So it would be more helpful if I took more of a risk. So if you just make a practice of your re revealing yourself to the people in your life, it will change everything. You will no longer have to think about motivating your staff. My salespeople just doubled their quotas. I didn't ask them to. They did it just because they're on fire, because they love it, because they see how human I am, because they make tons of mistakes, because I say, wow, I totally suck at that, you do that instead, okay? Because I say I'm scared, because they've seen me, you know, really be totally lost before for the best of their health.